What you see here is a little filter board for ADS-B reception on 1090 MHz. It basically consists out of a saw filter and two edge mount SMA connectors. If you take a close look at the traces connecting the SMA connectors with the saw filter, you will notice that they are rather thin. They have a width of just 0.75 mm and a length of approximately 3.5 mm. Since this is standard 1.6 mm thick FR4 PCB material, this would correspond to a characteristic trace impedance of about 100 ohms, while the impedance of the SMA connectors and the saw filter are the typical 50 ohms. While one might be tempted to think that connecting a 100 ohm source through a 100 ohm trace to a 50 ohm load might be a bad idea, the real question is, does it really matter, and if so, how much? The equation shown here is a common rule of thumb to determine the critical length of a PCB trace. The claim is that below this critical length all transmission line effects and the need for impedance matching can completely be ignored. A similar rule of thumb equation exists for digital signals where instead of the wavelength the rise or fall time, whichever one is smaller, is being used to calculate the critical length. But just how true is the claim that below this critical length all transmission line effects can be completely disregarded? The obvious place to turn to to answer this question is this equation right here describing the input impedance of a transmission line as a function of load impedance, trace impedance denoted as Z0 and the length of the transmission line. This graph shows the resulting input impedance as a function of length for various traces with varying impedances between 60 and 90 ohms. This graph assumes the load impedance to be 50 ohms. Horizontal limit lines show where the resulting impedance surpasses a VSWR of 1.1 corresponding to a mismatch loss of 0.01 dB. And another line shows where the mismatch loss exceeds 0.1 dB. From the graph it's obvious that any length except zero of a mismatched PCB trace has an influence on the impedance seen by the source. It should be noted that there is some periodicity in the transmission line equation and therefore the resulting impedance repeats every half wavelength. So just how much of an impedance mismatch is acceptable and how much is too much? Unfortunately, there is no globally accepted standard. For my own designs, I try to never exceed a mismatch loss of 0.1 dB. Since the resulting impedance is not only a function of the trace length, but also the characteristic trace impedance as shown in the graph, it's easy to exceed this limit using the one-tenth of a wavelength rule of thumb shown in the beginning of the video, especially if the trace width becomes very small. However, within the constraint of the PCB trace's impedance not exceeding 110 ohms, a one-sixteenth of a wavelength rule of thumb reliably keeps the resulting mismatch loss below 0.1 dB.